tonight. Six volcanoes are active in Vanuatu and one of them has killed four. And dangerous fire weather conditions prevail in the high plains and desert southwest of the United States. And welcome to Wednesday, April the 18th at Force 13 HQ and another episode instalment of Weatherbeat. Uh, tonight's top story, as you saw there, the first story that we're going to be discussing tonight is about the volcanic activity in Vanuatu. No less than six active volcanoes right now, but most of our attention is focused on its largest, uh, which is on Ambai Island. We discussed this a few times in previous shows. Uh, the volcano Monaro Vari, which is um, on level 3 according to Vanuatu, which means that uh, a minor eruption is still occurring. And with the latest news on that, our correspondent from the Australia and South Pacific region, David Tones. Now, could it be uh, with you, Nathan? Vanuatu's government is now looking into acquiring land to permanently resettle the island's 13,000 residents. The future of the people have been under threat since late last year. And whilst uh, residents were allowed to return to their homes after the volcano stabilised, uh, activity has now uh, seen the country's uh, government uh, looking into resettlement. A government spokesman said a shift in wind direction brought by tropical cyclone Holler last month has dramatically increased the impact of the ash fall. The ash fall has now affected the entire northern region of the island and remains a difficult situation. And that's the way the trade winds are blowing there as well. They're pushing the ash towards the north and a northwesterly direction. The government is also meeting Nathan with chiefs from the nearby islands to discuss the possibility of acquiring land for resettlement. So that is a uh, major uh, news item. And I think we cited that for Radio New Zealand. So I'll be keeping a close eye on uh, that source. Uh, can you confirm to us, David, whether um, I read something about this earlier that due to uh, the storm, not the storm, the volcano causing um, contaminated rainfall and uh, flows and such, it's claimed four lives. Is that true? I think it has, uh, Nathan, and the humanitarian organisation Rotary International recently spent more than $450,000 upgrading the island's hospital, and they have stepped in to help due to the current crisis. The uh, chairman of Rotary District uh, 9910 on Norfolk Island uh, said against the backdrop of massive cross crop losses, contaminated water supplies, that they yeah. have arranged for 400 refillable 20 litre fresh water containers. And they have been concerned be about they have been concerned about the island uh, becoming being rendered uninhabitable by all of the falling ash. Yes, and uh, confirmation, Nathan, from this uh, from the ABC here in Australia, four people have died in the last couple of days as a result of the volcano and the acid rain. Thanks very much for that, David. We've also got a map here as well, which details which parts of the island is is under threat. Uh, there's what I gather is a three-kilometer either diameter or radius, I'm not sure which, exclusion, not the exclusion of the danger zone. Now, uh, there's there's two distinct uh, features here. The exclusion zone is within the red shaded area, and the danger zone is that sort of a dashed red line there, which is much larger than that. 
obviously anyone near the actual um, caldera of the volcano is uh, is uh, dicing with death. Um, and if the volcano was to erupt, or if there's heavy rainfall in the area, all of that yellow area is at risk uh, from dangerous uh, volcanic flows, ash, um, and whatever may happen if the volcano was to erupt properly, uh, which is most of the island. So that is a real concern for those, for all those involved there. David, any final comment? Yeah. Yes, I've got some additional information. We can go right back to uh, the 29th of September last year. The Vanuatu's Prime Minister announced the compulsory evacuation of the entire island with the aim to having it completed by Friday uh, of that week. Uh, back then, Nathan, it was around 8,000 uh, people that have been evacuated now. And a lot of them uh, came back, didn't 13, they? 13,000, yes. So 13,000. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much, David. And now on to the weather that's been occurring around the world in the last 24 hours. Four are dead and 2,650 displaced after flooding and lightning in Angola. Misery also for Rwanda, where 41 have been killed and 160 injured by flooding that has been occurring over the last month. Sandstorms have closed schools and reduced visibility in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. And this image was sent in to us from the Midwestern part of the US, showing the extent of the weekend's blizzard. And let us know about the weather in your backyard. If you have a local story or any footage for us, do send it in at any of our social outlets or directly by email, contact at force13.com. And now onto the other story of today, as we enter April 18th, the night of the 17th over in the United States. And after all of that severe weather and of all kinds that we had, earlier in the week, at the end of the weekend. Uh, now it's still fire weather that we're looking at in central and southwestern parts of the US. And here to talk about here to talk about it right now is Craig. Hi Craig, how are you? I'm doing pretty well, Nathan. Um, the situation in terms of fire is pretty dire. Um, now I've seen two fire warnings in Oklahoma. Yeah, they're the SBC Storm Prediction Center. You wouldn't really think they would do on um, fire outlooks, but they do. Um, they've issued a, an extreme wow um, fire alert, uh, which is pretty much the highest you can go. And, and wowing at the size of it. Oh yeah, this is a very very large area. Um, uh, it's hard to believe that these fires are still burning, and I mean, the amount of uncontained fires is it's alarming. Apparently there are 18 uncontained large fires right now, and 10 that are contained. And speaking of the fires, I have uh, the radar that um, is showing one of the smoke plumes in Texas yeah so the states affected Oklahoma Texas New Mexico possibly into Arizona mm -hmm. and maybe into Colorado and Kansas as well actually but what yeah. what, what we're looking at right now where's that uh, this is in the Amarillo Texas ah. area um, this, what you're looking at, is a smoke plume from one of the wildfires. Um, gusts, wind gusts have been around 40 miles per hour, recorded by Mesonet. Um, but gusts have been recorded from much, far much higher. There's been a gust in Colorado recorded at 105 with a dust storm. Um, so these are pretty significant winds that are going to be driving these wildfires. Um, that's, it's it's really hard to believe that this is because this takes a lot of doing and a lot of debris to be burning and these fires is i was watching a report before we, the recording started um was that 
they they were getting cooler temperatures, but it was the wind and the um the extreme heat generated off the fires which wasn't helping. So pretty much the fire now is generating its own conditions, it's generating its own weather if you like. Um, it's creating its own winds to fan itself and then you get the front gust fr gusting winds that are driving this fire onwards so this pretty much makes it like a, a, a very very dangerous situation well Amarillo right now uh, the time as of broadcast is getting towards 6 p.m. Um, and the temperature is 89 um, the wind is 32 miles an hour gusting to 41 and that's at Amarillo mm. yeah and that those winds are strong enough to drive even the smallest of wildfires and turn it into an absolute monster um, also given the extreme much. drought conditions in the area too oh yeah um, there's been that as well so the biggest risk of the fire danger is this evening going into tonight uh, it looks like the risk is lessening tomorrow. Am I correct in that? Uh, yeah, you would be correct with that. They only expect a critical tomorrow. Um, only. Yeah, only. Um, and I stress that only. Um, they only expect a, a relatively smaller area compared to what they've gotten uh, for today. Uh, I'll sh bring that up as quick as I can. Are the, there any other... You know, fires that we can see on the radar um i've had a look not many due to the radar site positions um but this is the best view i could get of one but here's the storm prediction center's um, fire outlook for tomorrow so here you can see elevated and critical still extremely dangerous you can see it for kansas dodge city kansas and parts of oklahoma yeah, so that's going to be through tomorrow, and do we have an extended outlook there? Uh, we'll have day three to eight, so this will be a quick. So there we are, another area of risk there. So that's day four, here's day five. Nothing. Nothing. So pretty much from here, oh, never mind, day six, I think, was that, was that day six? No, it's not day six. Day seven must be. Yes, day seven. Day seven or day eight. No, it was four and five, wasn't it? Just that flashing the fire back risk back. was there. Three and right, four, is it? Or four and five. Whatever whatever that's all doing right now. I was just, just uh, trying to get some uh, satellite imagery up for the viewers as well uh, to see if we can make any... Um, any distinctions on the satellite imagery too. I can see some cloudiness and yes I can see what does look like some smoke in the area. Let me just get, I wasn't going to do this but whilst we're here uh, I'm just going to get this on the view if possible somewhere. There's me, hello. And uh, there we are. Um, that's a look at northern Texas into Oklahoma there. You can see in fact, maybe a fire over there in Kansas and some in southeastern Colorado as well on the satellite picture. And smoke plumes coming from the west over there as well, coming from Arizona. You can see one or two over there too. So it's uh, a dangerous day for many areas. So there's a significant one over there in Arizona. So a potentially dangerous day for some of these areas. Wildfires have been affecting the region for the last few days there were some evacuations that were going on and do continue in parts of Oklahoma. Craig, a final word? Um, well, I mean if you encounter fires to pretty much stay away from them as best as you can. Alright, well thanks very much for that and that concludes Weatherbeat tonight and uh, we'll see you again tomorrow as always or as usual. Um, we're not quite sure of how our schedule is working yet but we are planning to do most evenings at a similar time to this. So do stay tuned for more next time. Good night. Well, that's all for now. Here's the list of storm names for tropical cyclones this year in 2018 around the world.
As ever, you can follow Force 13's many outlets, the website, force13.com. You can also find our YouTube page, subscribe if you haven't already for the latest. We're also on Facebook, like our page on there, search Force 13 All in Text and follow our Twitter page, at Force 13 is the handle. You can also add my Skype account, search Force 13 All in Text or Fool 13 at extension 9094 on Discord for tropical weather chat.